Why, hello everybody, it's Robbie from Southern California, Zone 10A. And I came out here to have a cup of coffee. The sun isn't up yet, as you can see. Let's See, the sun is just coming past the trees, but it's not yet in the garden, so it's still shaded. So not all the solar fountains are working yet. I decided to come out here, just sit and watch the birds come in. We had an exciting week. And now I got to get back to rolling and getting my videos up. As a lot of you know, Nick Federoff, who's got things green, came out. Well, what he did was he contacted me and they asked me if, if it's okay if they can do a show. And they were really nice people. And I feel like I know them. And they asked, would you want to come into the studio or, look at the tomatoes, let's walk over here. Or would you rather um, us have come to you? And that was, you know, something we had not really thought about. So, I don't know. I talked it over with Gary. Isn't this gorgeous? Look at this. See, this is a midnight snack hybrid. So the tomatoes are semi-black, and then they turn that color. Isn't that beautiful? This is just a volunteer. I've talked about this on my garden tour. Look how wild it is. So, believe it or not, I am shy. And I thought, you know, maybe if we do it from here... It would be more comfortable and maybe he would get more of a kick out of doing it from here. So we thought, you know what, if that's what, we, you know, if you'd rather do it that way, then that was fine with us. And we decided to do it that way and it worked out really good. And my granddaughter said she'd come and just be shooting footage from behind. So, you know, we could see what was going on and go back and look at it later. And, oh, got it like an hour footage of that. And it is beautiful. Look at the hummingbird. I don't know if you can see him back there. He's checking out the little ball that's on the stick. I put these balls on there and I've talked about this. This is so if I bend down in the garden and I don't see it, I'm not going to poke an eye out. I actually learned that from my dad because when I was a little kid, he went out to get something, a piece of metal. He needed a metal rod and it was late at night and he bent down and yes, he ended up in ER with stitches because he cut the top above his eyebrow. So now I put these balls. See, you learn from other people. And I make sure that if you bend down, you'll catch that. And it's nice and soft. So that's why I put either a stuffed animal or a ball. A little glue gun, you know, a little bit of hot glue on there. And a soft little fuzzy ball. You can get it at the craft store. And it, this, these things stay on all year. It's amazing. So uh, we decided to go ahead and let him do it here. And I've already lost my train of thought. Sorry, I get sidetracked all the time. But it worked out really good. It was fun. And my granddaughter, like I said, she did all the footage. She followed us around. And let me tell you something. People have asked, did he get the rat, the pack rat that lives in the yard? No, he didn't get a third, not even, a, I think, an eighth of the garden because it's a 30-minute, half-hour show. And there was no way to get everything. And he wanted to do Gary's garden, too, in the front yard. Dambusia, or mosquito fish in here. Okay. And rosy red minnows. And by the way, if you go to the Agriculture Commissioner, or better still, the, um, I always forget the names. Vector Control. Vector Control. You can get the mosquito fish for free. That's what's really cool. Now, this How drunk does he have to get to come up with these ideas? Because it's just, this is so cool. Half the time I don't even know what he's doing. Oh, I got to go down here. I need these poles. And I was like, okay. And then I come yeah. down here and find I'm, this. I'm going to take rebar, and I'm, I want to hang them randomly throughout the shade house. So there was just so much to do. But I will say the experience was really a lot of fun. I enjoyed it. I felt very comfortable with him. It's just somebody that I felt when he walked in here, I felt like I knew him. And that, you know, doesn't happen too often. And I think that was just fantastic. So we had a lot of fun on that. Don't want to dwell on that. You're probably not interested in that. <laughs> And let's see, I want to sit down. What else did we do? Oh, Gary and I were sitting here the other day, and Gary got so excited. He started yelling, oh my gosh. Gary's very quiet, usually. Look at, look at. He said, look at the baby. So we have a lot of spice finches now that come in here, and they are not native. They've been, let's use the term, introduced, because they probably got loose from somebody. And the spice finches do no harm. They eat, uh, basically, they like little seeds. So they come in all the time. It started with a couple, and now all of a sudden there's been a whole bunch, half dozen at one time will come in. But they came in with babies. And what got Gary excited is the babies that they were feeding, there were two of them. Gary says they're not spice finches. 
He says those are pintail whitest. Pintail whitea is a, another finch. I want to get into details on that because that could be a 30 minute video. They do not build a nest and lay eggs in their own nest. They actually lay their eggs in other nests. Certain species, they know which type of birds they've got to lay their nest in. They normally would not be a spice finch, but you know, that's all they've got here and that's the closest thing. And generally they will lay one egg in one nest and then go find another nest and lay another egg, the female in another nest and she'll spread her eggs around. But being that there's not that many, she must have laid two eggs of hers in the spice finch nest. And what happened was they brought the babies here and Gary recognized them right away and said, those are not baby spice finches because Gary knows his finches really well. He said, those are pintail whitest. So that's what got him so excited is they were actually pintail whitest. And he said the reason that they were feeding the two pintails and the baby spice finches weren't here is spice finches will breed at eight to nine months old. They can, they're old enough at that point, they mature much quick, quicker. Where your pintail whitest, they don't breed until they're two years old generally. So they take longer to mature, which would go with the same essence of being fed. The baby finches, the baby spice finches, will probably wean much quicker. As soon as they learn to eat, they're off on their own. But the pintails taking longer to mature have to stay with the parents longer. So probably the spice finches were already off and doing their own thing. And so the pintails will hang around a little longer, which they did eat. I watched them and observed them eating seeds out of the bowls, but they still wanted to be catered to by their parents. So that's what was exciting, Gary, because we have seen the pintail whitest here. I have seen it. We've seen the male has a long tail feather. She's, I would say, eight to ten inches long, long black tail feather. And we have seen them here. But we have, you know, uh, this is the first time we've seen the babies in the, in the yard here in the garden. So this is exciting. So he's hoping that they will make a home here and we'll start seeing the pintail white is as they color up because in the beginning they're kind of a brown with a light colored belly and they have a little black stripe kind of by their eye and then that will change as they color up so he's really excited about that of course we've had a lot of other birds we've got uh, this is no joke i'm going to say hundreds and there could be more of the lesser goldfinches and then we've got the songbirds starting to come back i saw that lemon yellow song finch he was in the tree and they come and take a bath in the water fountain here this is their favorite the favorite one is the one of course with the fish that shoots up and the frogs because they can feed out of it there's times there's about a dozen birds in there and they don't all have to be goldfinches they all seem to get along here in the garden which is really really nice the goldfinches don't eat the same food as your sparrows do. So they all get along. They're not competing against food. They may be competing as who's going to take a bath, but as far as food, it's really cool when you've got a lot of birds that eat different types of food and then they don't quarrel with each other. So that's what I really like. So there's been a lot of birds. What else exciting is going on here? Not much. Uh, he was fascinated that all these water features were solar he didn't realize that when he walked through and you could see there that one's the electric one i've got the ball one that's electric but the rest are all solar and of course they're just starting to go on see that the little guy here it's just starting to bubble because the sun is just barely reaching the top and i promise i'm going to get this video up on how i'm making my solar panels now because i was doing the solar panel holders that way and now i do it this way and this has turned out to be the best absolutely the best so simple and easy to make. I have two methods and I'll get that to going. He asked about this. What I do a lot of times is I'll set up a prototype and I'm debating if I like that or not. See, it's got a pipe and the pipe dribbles and I'm not sure. I'll throw something together and I'll stare at it, sometimes for a few days, sometimes for longer. So I'm trying to figure out how I want to do that, but I'm gonna make another one that I'm gonna be crazy about. There's my rock one. And that one took a while till the birds really started going to it. And keep that in mind. I know some people have made some of these solar water features and then they say, oh, nothing came to it. They have to know it's safe. So just because you put it out and it's got water doesn't mean they're gonna all run to it unless it's so hot, they just have to get water right away. Because 
probably they already have a place they're getting water. So they will go to what's comfortable to them first. And they have to know it's safe. And it usually takes one bird to go into a fountain like that. And then once one goes in there, they all go in. See, they, they're used to this one. So they all go in this one. They already know it's safe. It's been here for quite a few years now. And so this is the safe place to go. But now they're starting to go to the rock one. They were in there this morning too. And that's all it is, is be patient. They will take it. They need water. It's, it has nothing to do whether it's solar or electric. What it is, is they have to know it's safe. The same thing even with a hummingbird feeder. Sometimes they don't know what it is and the hummingbirds don't want to go near it. Well, it, this goes with all birds. They just have to learn that it's something safe. So keep that in mind. And there's the other one, of course, the ball one. This is the favorite of uh, the hummingbirds. They love to sit on top and roll. They can grip that ball. It's kind of got natural algae growing on it now. And the algae, think of it as, think of how tiny they are. It's like grass. To them, it's like rolling and holding on the grass. And, and they have something to grip on. So they absolutely love that. It's got that green algae on it. Don't worry about scrubbing that off. You just don't want black mold. You see that, wash it. I don't really have that problem with any of the fountains. I rarely have seen any mosquitoes. People have asked me about, do you have mosquito larva? Mosquitoes, the, the regular mosquito lays its egg, let's say kind of on a raft-like situation. So they lay it in there and the eggs have to stay in one position until the babies inside are ready to, let's say, emerge from the egg. But if they flip, then they won't emerge. They'll die. And that's what happens to a lot of the eggs in these moving water features. Even though they're not moving at night, it doesn't matter. As long as they're moving somewhat during the process of the time when the egg is getting ready to, you know, develop, if it moves, it'll kill them. It's kind of like reptiles. If people that breed turtles know that, when a turtle lays an egg, a, let's say some sort of tortoise, you're supposed to collect the egg and keep the egg in the position in which they laid it. Now, I think, granted, if you catch them as soon as they lay it, it doesn't really matter that much, but you're supposed to put the egg in a carton or a holder, this is a reptile, and then leave it. You can put it in an incubator. You know, years ago, I've hatched out uh, different types of tortoises. You can put it in an incubator at, let's say, 80, 85 degrees, but once the egg goes in an incubator, and it takes whatever long it takes, and it's a long process, you don't turn the egg. It is not a chicken egg. So you leave it, and then they will develop, and they will emerge because they're sitting there with their shell developing, and they need to come out. But if you flip it, you'll kill the embryo inside. So it works that way with the mosquitoes. That's why I don't get mosquito larva in any of these good moving water features. I've never had to empty them because of that. Standing water, yes. Water features, no. Let's see, what else is going on? I've left a lot of the seed heads still. See all the seed heads? Because I really do want the birds. We've got, I'm going to have to say, well over a thousand birds now. And I do leave the seed heads for the birds. There's no reason for me to pick all these seed heads off. Let them eat the seeds. This is full of seeds inside, let them eat it. And then what I'll do is I'll cut this all down and I'll compost it. It makes great compost. I don't need to collect the seed from the collard. I've talked about this many times. I don't wanna make this a garden tour, but it will hybridize with everything else and you just don't know what you end up getting. So I don't collect the seeds. The seeds are for the birds. My garden, you know, some people may think, oh, it doesn't look that good. It doesn't look like everything's in a row. It's not clean. My garden's more like a forest. It's supposed to look wild to me. This is the way I want it. Everybody can do it their own way. You know, that's the main thing. You do it the way you want. But I want it to look in a wild state. I don't want to have to come out here and groom it. I don't. I'll put brown, I will pull the brown leaves and I will compost them or yellow leaves. Like back here, I don't throw anything away. If it makes it to the ground, then it makes it to the ground. But this is compost. This is great. You know, let's walk over here. I, I don't want to throw this away. This is this goes back and turns into food for my plants. And here's one of my moving compost buckets. See? I'll just throw it in there and it will all break down. I'm going to have terrific compost soil in that big five-gallon bucket. But I can, for now, I leave it. And look what ended up here. 
Look at that zucchini back there. It's all the way to the ground. And it's feeding off that bucket that's sitting on the top that I'm throwing leaves in. And sometimes I throw kitchen scraps. I think I've only thrown kitchen scraps in there once, once or twice now. But it's feeding two zucchini plants in here. Isn't that something? So I just love to have a bucket where I can move it around. That's the way my garden is supposed to look. Yeah, let's walk down here again. I want it to look this way. Yes, I will tie up some tomatoes. And I'll either use a yarn or use masking tape. Or here I even tied a piece of tool to hold this up. Technically, this should be trimmed. I'm waiting. I really like my dazzling blue kale. It's amazing. I looked at the video. This thing's only a year old. And it's like nine feet tall. Look how big it got. And the scrub jay is looking for peanuts. And boy, will he follow me around and scream and scream. So this is the way I like my garden. I want it where it is a food forest. Look at this. Look how big the leaves are getting now. They're just starting to change. Look how blue and big. Remember, all this is great. But whatever you do, you make sure it either goes back to the garden. Even if it falls on the ground, it's fine. But it's all changing now. As soon as the seed heads are gone, like this one, all the seed heads are gone, the leaves are going to turn big. It will tur turn big even on the old dinosaur kale back there. And look at that. Let's try to get back here. I just noticed this. Look at all the new growth on the trunk there. This is like a monster. It almost looks like a dinosaur the way it's scaled. Look at this and everything. See, this is so full of seed heads here that it's still is growing small leaves. The leaves on the top are still small, see. But it's going to change. Once the seed heads are gone, it will change. So the leaves will turn big and then the dazzling blue kale, the da oh, this is not dazzling blue kale. This is the purple sprouting broccoli there that's got all the seeds. The same thing, this is, look how big that thing got. This is unreal. It's in that cage, which I cannot do anything about. I put that basket. I had cut a hole in the basket to protect it from the rabbits and then it fell over. The basket can't be taken out unless I wire, take a wire cutter and cut it off. I'm leaving it. But it just ended up with so many trunks I wasn't paying attention because I couldn't get back here. And the, it, this has fed hundreds and hundreds of birds, this one plant, with all the seeds. And the leaves are going to change. They're already starting to change. Look how purple. Look at the leaf. You would think this is purple tree colored, but it's not. See, this is the purple sprouting broccoli, but the leaves are edible. I put that in our juice that we drink. I use the leaves, so they are beautiful. They've got a purple tinge too, some of them. Okay, let's try to get back out of here. But this is the exact way I want my garden. And I was a little nervous, I would admit, when, when Nick Fedorov showed up, up, because I said to him, I'm doing everything wrong. And he said, are you kidding me? And he's right. Like I tell you, there is no wrong or right. What works for you is right. My daughter now has a garden. Don't want to make a big deal out of it because I'm so happy she got a garden. So I, I let her do her thing. I don't bother her with her garden. But she was so upset when she sprayed something she found on the internet. Uh, she wants something on YouTube that spray your plants with vinegar and soap and all this. And she did. She didn't ask me about it. And that's fine. She called me up in hysterics. Everything's dying. I said, you know, I, I really feel bad to tell you this, but I tried the same thing and I killed off a lot of stuff too once. It doesn't always work. So don't believe every single thing you read. And next time, just test it. But I told her, please, don't fret. I'm sure that a lot of those plants will come back. You may have damaged the leaves to the point where it's no return. But the plant itself is going to try to rejuvenate, which it did. So if you're trying something you find, just test it first. You know, it, it, a lot of things say test it. Here's another prototype. That's what Nick was looking at. What are all these things? These are prototypes. I made this, it worked, and now I'm gonna make a whole bunch more. Make a lot of prototypes and it doesn't work, then I change my way up. So if you're gonna try something and you got a big garden, just try it on a few leaves and then see what happens first. And if it works out, then good. Let's see, what else is going on? So we've had a lot of birds coming in. We've had snakes going through. Just to, I haven't seen any rattlesnakes this year, which is good. I don't want rattlesnakes in my garden. But we have had to go for snakes, and we've seen small ones and super big ones. I've got one that's like eight feet long. It's amazing. Isn't this gorgeous? Even this, I don't know if you go back to the garden tours I've done. This is one 
color. This is not a tree color. Let's back up. That's a tree color. That's got that trunk and it's growing straight up and I've got to get more of the cuttings. I'm actually going to try to get that one that's leaning on the ground. I may try to get that to root right there. And then this one I'll have to do something with at some point, but it looks so beautiful I might leave it for now. And then that's tree color in the back. And this is dazzling blue kale with another purple sprouting broccoli. They're growing two together in the same container. So they kind of look intermingled. So that's it. But this is the color plant that the rabbits hide in and, and everything. Notice the leaves are changing. Look how big and beautiful the leaves are getting now. And the birds do nibble on the, the young tender leaves. So a lot of times when they start to grow, the leaves look really bad. That's because they chewed on the little tiny well, they want the tender leaves. They don't, they're smart. They don't want to eat the older leaves. The new leaves coming out from the top. These tiny leaves are what tastes the best. So if they can get in there and reach it, that's what they do. But this is one plant. Now this went to seed and the leaves are really small. If you go back and look at my garden tour, it's skimpy. I didn't worry about it. I knew that once the seed heads were gone, and most of them are, there's still some remnants left there. But once the seed heads are gone, the plant's going to change again. And now, in another couple weeks, we're going to be going in the fall, so the plants are even going to grow better. So that's what's going on there. So the leaves are starting to change and come in big and beautiful. Isn't that cool? This is the way I like a garden. I don't want to have to come out here and groom and keep everything lined up and something's touching. Even with pests, if you ended up with a pest, let's say you had some insect that attacked collard. Let's use that for example. Well, if you've got all your collard, you know, like don't put all your eggs in one basket. If you've got all your collard in one spot and you had a really bad, let's say a plant disease or a pest, guess what? It's going to go boom, boom, boom. It's just going to go, it doesn't have to go far from one plant to the other. But if you've got collard here and then you've got more collard way down somewhere else and they're not touching, the odds are you may have to just remove one plant or deal with one plant and your other plants will be fine. Well, this goes with all your different plants. It's worked for me and that's what I like kind of like a food forest because things are just all mixed up. Nothing is side by side. There might be some, but not everything. It's not deliberately done side by side. The moringa tree is doing good too. Look at that. Beautiful and we've been using the leaves and making a green drink, which I've got to do this morning. I'm going to tell you when I make a green drink, I can feel different. I feel so good and just everything. I mean, I've got arthritis, but I don't have any symptoms. As long as I have a green drink, I have no symptoms. And then there's the papaya. Look at this. Gary, oh, Gary harvested all the papaya off I get. Oh, there's still one here. And now we got all the little ones on the very top. This thing has got to be 12 feet tall. Again, what is it? Less than two years old. It's amazing how fast these things grow. So this has been a lot of fun. Oh my gosh, it's just been a fun week. What else? Let's see. And this Moringa tree is doing really good too. I topped it because I didn't really want it to go into the roof. But it's done really well, so I'm quite happy with it. Let's take a walk in the other garden. These papayas, of course, are doing really well. Look at that. Gary keeps harvesting, keeps eating. I, I would never have believed five years ago if somebody told me you're going to grow papaya and eat papaya. I would have thought, yeah, right, sure. But we are. It's just amazing. And it wasn't even something I tried to grow. It came up in my compost because Gary was buying papaya from the store and just moved them out here. And they have done really good. Even the, the pomegranate, I grew that from seed from a pomegranate I got from my daughter's house and then I put the seeds on the deck. I just threw it in some of those upside down planters. There's a tomato plant here coming up. And all these seedlings came up, just like hundreds of seedlings. I didn't know what to do with all of them. And they're growing in here too. See, we've got pomegranate. So we've got a lot of different fruit trees. I'll have to do a walk one day of the different fruit trees we've got and talk about that. But that was, uh, that's a seedling, so I don't even think that one's two years old yet either. And then the other papaya, now I've got a new papaya. Well, we've got that one that's starting to take off. Those are orange trees growing in there from seed. And then, um, let's see. Oh, of course, this one in front of me. This came up in that pot in my yard, my garden. And I looked at it and I really didn't want it. And I thought, well, I'll just drag the whole pot here because 
Remember, they will break through the pot. You've seen that, and there it is. All of these are in pots. They just break the bottom and keep on going. And I thought I would bury the pot part way down into the soil here and leave it. It was very small when I moved it here and it's doing really, really well. Okay, let's just take a walk. Again, I don't want this to be a garden tour. I want this to be a nature walk. Look at that. My tubs are starting to grow. Now I'm gonna admit, I did not plant zucchini. That one on the end in the bathtub is zucchini. It's full of zucchini. Haven't done anything along the wall. But the tubs I sat there, I had a zucchini in the house that was sitting too long. And when I broke it open, the seeds were hard. So I brought the seeds out and I just kind of threw them everywhere. So I don't know what this is gonna grow. It may grow zucchini. They might all grow differently. And there's way too many in there. Oh, you lost your tail. Something must have grabbed him and he lost his tail. So I'm not sure what this will grow, but it probably will grow something that looks like a hybrid. I should get serious and grow some zucchini. But when you take them out of plants like that, that you grew in the yard, and if it, you know, hybridized with something, then you don't know what it's gonna grow, which is still fine because they're still good to eat. That is not a problem. There's a the truck bed. It's just so, isn't that nice? You got a Sunday morning, no weed whackers, no blowers. You hear the birds singing and the occasional plane going by. You hear nobody talking, everything's quiet. And that's what's so cool. That's what's so nice. That's why I like coming out in the garden and just sitting and having chairs around. Nick Betteroff said that to me. He said, I see you put chairs all over. Yeah, because you want to be able to just find a place maybe out of the sun and just sit down and it's quiet. And it was just so beautiful. Let's take a walk down the hill. Everybody, I think, should have a place where you could just sit and just hang out. You know, someplace to unwind. Life is so stressful. It really is. But if you have a place I mean, some people don't want to do yoga. I'm not going to do yoga. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. I think it's great. Or exercise or different things. Some place where you could just sit, gather your thoughts, or don't think about anything. And just slowly unwind. You could do that in the smallest space. Set up a chair. Put some plants on the chair. Put a tub on there. You've seen that video, I'm sure. One chair. I found the first one in the trash. I've got another one I found I'm going to put together. And then I wanted to set up a couple more. And guess what? I can't find any chairs. Every time I see free chairs, I call. They're gone. I actually went to the thrift store, but they gave me a good deal yesterday. So I got those for $3 a piece. That worked out really good. $3. They'll last for as long as they do. And I'm going to kind of direct the water. So the water that's coming out of it, because I'm going to put a lot of leaves in there and different things on the bottom. And I'm going to direct the water where I want to direct it. So it's going to be really, really cool. So I'm really excited. I can't, you know, complain about $3 a chair. Oh, isn't that gorgeous? That's a wren. It's amazing how small they are and how loud they sing. So I'm happy I got some chairs to set up and I'll set that up with you. They even made me show them the video at the thrift store because they wanted to see the video on what I'm going to do with the chair. There's Gary's bees. They're very busy. Let's see if we can see inside what's going on there because I haven't been down here for, a, I guess, a week. I'm going to have to say that thing, that box looks so full that they're going to be splitting off very soon. They can't even fit in it. 
So I've got these ideas with the chairs. But see, if you set up a chair, what can you put in a chair with a, with a tub on top? You can, green onions, walking onions. Everybody should grow walking onions. Once you get walking onions, you probably will never have to buy any again as long as you do it right. When they start to walk, you take those babies off as soon as the bulbs look like they're mature enough and stick them in the ground. And if they fall off too soon, they break off, they'll grow too. I've had them grow where you thought for sure they would not grow and they do grow. So walking onions is a really a must. You can use that for anything. People have asked, what do you use walking onions for? Everything, you use it for everything. You use it in salads, you use it in stir fry, anywhere you would use an onion. If you go out to a fast food restaurant and you're bringing your food home, chop up some of your own fresh green walking onions and put it in your sandwich or your food that you're eating. So you know you're getting the great enzymes that your body needs. There's so many things you can do with that. The other thing is garlic chives. That grows really, really well too. So there's a lot of things you can grow in a chair in a tub. Parsley, you can even grow tomato plants. There's all kinds of things you can grow. Anything that you like, you wanna grow strawberries? Strawberries, think about, think about the chairs off the ground. You got dogs running around your yard? You can keep the dogs out. Who pooped downstairs? Ma Penny? Who pooped? <gasps> Molly pooped? You got critters? I got ways to keep other critters out. That's why I really like chairs. And the other thing is, if you're not happy, you grew it one season and you wanna move it, you don't like it, you pick up that chair and you move it. If the soil is too soft, put a plate under each leg, put something under each leg so it won't sink into the soil if you've got it on, let's say, soft soil. A plate will work, a stepping stone, a brick, anything. Where You just position something under the four legs. That's all you have to do. No big deal. There's a lot of different things that you can do with it. So there's, to me, there's almost always a fix. Look at that. We just walked from my garden all the way down the trail to here. And Gary's got fruit on there. He kind of has been trying to keep the deer out. I have not seen any deer this year. I'm not saying they're not here, but I haven't seen any. Nick saw all our piles. He thought Gary was composting. I guess he is and he isn't. This is wood chips and they're breaking down and then he moves them where he wants to move them. So he's got his garden going. A house divided, he said. Well, Gary had his way. He thought to, at first I was doing too much work. He thought what I was doing was too much work. So he wanted something even easier. Look, he's got apples. And that's one way to keep the deer out. Um, and so he just had his own idea, and that's perfectly fine. I mean, this structure was here when we got the house, and it's solid. It's built out of steel. I mean, this thing is amazing, and there were so many ideas of what to do with it. But this actually worked out far better to put a garden under here, because see that with the slats, Gary's garden is never in direct sunlight all day. It's always going to be, all these plants are going to get sunshade, sunshade, sunshade as the sun passes through the different slats. Let's go inside. Got to make sure to keep the gate closed. And why? Because the rabbits wait. If you leave the gate open, they come a-running. They're that smart. And they know. Isn't that gorgeous? And this is a place I like sitting. This is another place. I really have to set something up really cute with like a table and a chair or something. This is completely different. It's like a water garden. Even the cabbage butterflies come down here and enjoy themselves. Look at this. Rhubarb. Look how big. Oh my gosh. He's got rhubarb, he's got, oh, a tree collard. Okay, he took some cuttings from me. Plus he's got his own, they can take his own cuttings from. He's actually cleaned up in here. You could not walk in here before. And he's got all kinds of stuff growing in here too. Isn't this amazing? So he's kind of got it going in a way like I've got, but he's got his own thing going too at the same time. He enjoys his water features. There's his potato mint. I haven't seen it for a while. Like I said, it was such a busy, busy week. When I knew Nick was coming, I'm. it's not like I wanted to clean up my garden. I just wanted to make it where we could all walk through and pass through. That's what I wanted to do. So it would be comfortable. I didn't want him tripping on anything. And yet, I forgot to roll up the hose. Nobody said anything. 
I rolled up one. There's two hoses in there. And then afterwards, I looked down after everybody left. I thought, oh, I forgot to roll up the hose. Look at that. He's got his pepinos growing there. He's got his obeys growing, and they're taking off and growing up. But see, he has sunshade all day. And the plants love it. I mean, obviously, he doesn't even have any problems on the hottest days because of that. So they're getting sun all day. But the way the sun is positioned, it's going through the sun. It will, it will lay some shade. And you can see that as, let me get up and walk around again. I sat down on a chair I found. Um, see how you've got sun and then you've got shade and then you've got sun and shade. That's actually the best way to really grow almost all plants because no matter what, they're getting sun all day, but they're getting shade too. But he gets all kinds of stuff here. In Gary's garden, which makes it so different with all the, look at the pepinos, look at this, and the sweep tin is everywhere. With his water features, he's got the dragonflies. Now it's really too early in the morning, I think for dragonflies, they really come out more in the afternoon down here. But they come here because they're laying their eggs and they find the insects they want. There's, they eat mosquitoes, so that's really good to have dragonflies in your garden. But this is just amazing what he has done. He took my ducks. I had ducks in the front yard. They were sitting in my plants. And I said to him, why don't you take my ducks? And he said, what for? I said, well, I think they look cute. They don't, they're not doing anything about planters. And so he said they were swimming in circles, but now that the algae and, well, I shouldn't say algae, the plants are growing, the water plants, they really don't have too far to go. So they're kind of sitting together, but I think they look good. And they provide some shade for the fish that are in there. And I think it's just, it's good, totally. It's got a sunflower coming up. And let's see what else. He's got sweet potato and mint. He's got his mint there. See, with this, he's not really going to have a lot of pest problems. A mouse isn't really going to want to go across water. Your rodents probably stay somewhat away from it. He has not had any rodent problems down here. And there's his strawberries. So this is what he wanted to try, and it worked out really good. And with the holes on the bottom, strawberries like a lot of water, and so do celery. So this way, he doesn't have to water anything. All these pools that he has built in the center, he doesn't water them. There's no maintenance of water. Just making sure the water level on his pond stays good and he adds a little water to it, but that's it. As far as anything else, he doesn't have to water it because it's like a wicking bed. So it works out really, really good for him. Ooh, this I want to take. This is Swiss chart seeds and these are green. I have lots of the one that's green and red, the mixed one. But I actually like the taste of green Swiss chard. It's, it tastes more like spinach and I happen to like spinach. I've always liked spinach. So that's it. Just wanted to kind of do a nature walk today. Show you all the different birds that I've seen coming into the yard. Here's his pond. Oh, that was funny. I was looking at the video last night. And I said to Gary, what video is this? He goes, that's my pond. That's when I put it together. Oh my goodness. A year? It's been, July was a year. He put it together last July a year ago. You could see everything. Let me step back because you can't see anything here. You could see the pond, the plants, everything, and the wood chips he put in there, that, you know, the cover, the ground cover. And now you can't even see the pond. And I heard he told me he had to clear a lot out because he wanted him to be able to see it. Oh, I know what that is. They probably had some more babies. This is kind of late in the season, but the Orioles have nested again. And we're at the very end of August now. And they're almost at the end of August and they're nesting. Look at that. that we're going to have more bananas there. So he's got a flower on one. See, they only throw one batch of bananas per plant. That's the only sad thing is once they're done, the plant's gone, he drops it, it becomes compost. So that one's got bananas already there. And then he's got that one that's gonna have bananas. Isn't this, I mean, let's walk around the other side. Yeah, the Oreos, we saw them when Nick was here doing the show that they have already built a nest. And that's what they want me out of. The nest is in that leaf up there. 
So they're gonna, they probably have babies in there. I can take a peek later. I peek with a very tiny camera. Oh, it's a dragonfly. The dragonflies are coming out. And they must have an abundance of food. If they have an abundance of food, this is basically how birds work. They will do multiple clutches. So there's so much food for them because they eat a lot of insects. And they also, the Orioles, have been feeding out of the hummingbird feeders. Look at that. There's bananas everywhere. It's above my head. Isn't that something? Look at that. Oh, he makes these pipes. He finds pipes that people are throwing away. And then he hangs them with rebar and he hangs plants off of him. That's the Oriole. She's screaming. They want me out of here. So, yes, they have babies. They probably want to come in and feed. So I think I should leave them and let them do their own thing because this is really late in the season for them. I just thought it would take a morning walk because like I said, it's rarely this quiet. During the week, you get up. Oh, look at the onion. This is an onion. Look at that onion flower. Unlike the walking onion. See? That throws seeds. And then he's got onions and he's got leeks growing and different things. The onions will throw a flower where your walking onions throw babies. Actual babies. It's kind of like having guppies or, or a fish that lays eggs. You know, let's say a zebra finch. A zebra finch. A zebra type uh, fish. They lay eggs where your guppies have live babies. Well, that's kind of like walking onions. The walking onions have live babies. He must have walking onions down here. And then your regular onions throw seeds. So you got to plant the seed. I like walking onions. People have asked, can you use the whole onion? On the walking onions, the whole thing. The bottom has a very small onion. And of course you can use it. But once you pull the onion out to use it, swing over here, this is garlic chives. Once you pull the onion out, the plant is gone. So I rarely pull the whole plant out, but yes, you can. If you've got hundreds of them growing, treat them like a regular onion and you'll have like the small, onions to eat. Yes, you could chop up a whole bunch and use them as a white onion. The whole thing is edible on walking onions. The green, the baby onions, you wanted to put baby onions in, in a salad, you want to uh, impress somebody and they see something they've never seen before. Yes, the whole thing is absolutely edible on the walking onions. But so that's, that's his garden. But yeah, the birds are screaming because they want me out. And I guess I'll respect them and do that for them. Look at this. I don't come down here that often, and I should, because it's not the hike. It's really not. It's the busyness. I get up in the morning and start my day, and it seems like before I know it, it's the end of the day, and I'm rushing. That's why I said it's nice to have some place to sit in. So I will take a small break in my own garden, and then Gary comes down here and does his garden. How often does he water his garden? He actually only waters, goes through quickly with the hose and waters everything, he said, like twice a week. Even in the summer, he doesn't water every day. My garden, I do like to go through. It may be more of a habit than anything. And I go through, I try once a day. It takes me 20, 30 minutes to do front and back. It really doesn't take long at all because you're just kind of walking through and adding some water. There's always it's some dampness, even on the hottest days. It's still damp. In the winter, no, maybe once or twice a week, the same thing. Even containers, they're not going to dry out that quick. You would think they do, but they don't. So I don't have to water it that often. Look, he's got empty pools back there. So we know he's doing more stuff. And look at that fig tree. Wow, I think that one came up from seed. I think most of his did. I don't know how good they are or not. So as far as maintenance, you know, you, you actually put the maintenance in that you want and kind of figure out your own garden. But you don't have to even water every day. I happen to enjoy going out in the garden, no cell phone, no nothing, just taking a hose and watching the birds, watching the lizards, butterflies, bees, all the critters in the garden and just unwinding, not winding as this thing is doing, winding, but unwinding in the garden for a short time. That's what I like to do. And it really does help. It's a, it's a, such a great de-stressor. And I just enjoy that. That's my thing. So with that, I think I'm going to go back up, walk through my garden. And maybe I only had one cup of coffee. I usually take two a day, if that. And then get one more cup of coffee and get some stuff done that I need. Look at that.
I bet you that's Gary's bee. So I will let you all know when I know more about the show. We did it for fun. We didn't get paid. It was all done for fun. And, you know, it was fun. Like I said, I talked about it. The only show I've ever done was a romper room show. <sighs> My daughter wanted to be on romper room many, many years ago. People don't even know what that is. It was a kid's show. You had a teacher with like six or eight kids and they would conduct like a, like a little school, you know, like a school classroom. And she was too young. She was only three. And she wanted to be on it. She talked when she was nine months old, that one. And she demanded on being on it. So long story short, yes, I contacted them because, well, like, like I said, she pestered me every single day from morning till night. They said, okay, I had to come on and do a little thing with the kids on the show. And she was supposed to be able to do only one show. That was the funny thing. I have no videos from that. My brother said he had some, but I have yet to see any. Um, they didn't let you on the show until you were like six or seven, and she was only three. So, but I told them, she talks, she understands, she does whatever you tell her, she will do it. But they said, no, they'll let her come on the one show that I'm doing. Okay, so when I got into the studio, they said, oh, we're going to do hair and makeup. So they grabbed me and put me in the room. My mom was supposed to be watching her. Hmm. And I'm having my makeup done in the room and I look up and watching the monitor because this was the show from the day before and I had already met the teacher who does the show. She had brought her out during a commercial break or something. And I look up and lo and behold, who is walking into the studio and sitting down with the other kids? You got it. My daughter. I said to the girl doing my makeup, oh my gosh, she's not supposed to be on that show and somebody's not watching her. But the teacher was quick. She introduced her. She said, oh, this is Debbie. Her mom is going to be here tomorrow and join our show. But you are more than welcome to sit in and join, not, not the show. She said the classroom. Join the classroom. You are more than welcome to sit in and join us. Would you like to, Debbie? And she said yes. And so she got to do two robber room shows. And she was in seventh heaven. She was so excited about that. That was pretty much it. I don't know. I've done a couple little things, but nothing, nothing major. Just stuff like that. All right. Well, now I think I am. I hear, I hear leaf blowers on a Sunday. So somebody's cleaning. So that's my signal. Now the noise is starting. The sun is coming up. I'm going in. I am so glad you joined me. And it's just so beautiful. I just wanted to do a nature walk. I haven't done a nature walk for a while. And I wanted to show you all the different things because I do sit in my garden with a camera and I try to get all kinds of footage of different birds and animals coming in. So I hope you enjoyed this. Got to get more videos up on how I make my new solar panel holders, another chair I'm going to do, composting in place. I love my composting in place. No turning, no moving. You want to use it later on. You can move the compost afterwards to a new setup you want to do. I just love the way I do it. It really makes gardening fun. And the only thing Nick got wrong on his show is when he said we're old time gardeners and we're well experienced. We are not. We have not been doing it this long. This is all new. Uh, we were not gardening. He must think we've been doing this 10 years when we've been doing this. I don't even think it's been five yet. You know, but the thing is, some people say they can't garden. It's not that they can't. The interest has to be there. Once you've got an interest in something, you take off. This is human nature. The moment you have the interest, and that's what people have to have is the interest. And once things work out and it's easy and you've got the interest... How do they say it? The world is your oyster. That's when you will take off and look for everything and how to do things. And I think that's what happened with Gary and I when he became gluten free. He wanted to start eating healthier because after he cut gluten out and his aches and his pains, this is no joke. I was walking with a cane. To come down to his garden, I would have to use a cane. Gary was walking with a cane. I had to get him a special cane with a seat on it. He had arthritis in his legs so bad that he could only stand for so long and he needed a way to sit. So he had a cane that would pop open with a seat. And once we started doing gardening and we started eating food from our own garden, and this does not mean we're perfect because we are not. You know, we're, we eat other things too, but we don't eat wheat. Life changed for both of us. It started with him, and then I thought, well, if I'm going to cook gluten-free for him, I might as well, because I'm the cook in the family, even though he does a little bit. 
I started cooking gluten-free meals, and when I saw the change in me, I, I go to the doctor and say, my hands, my hands are swollen, my fingers were swollen, I want to type, I need to do things, both hands, and they checked me out and said, you've got arthritis in your hands, there's nothing we can do. Nothing we can do. Guess what? I don't have it anymore. I type, I have no pain. So you, when you have an interest, and gardening became an interest because a little, in my opinion, goes a long way. A little, and that means food. You don't have to grow what we're growing. We don't use anywhere near what we're growing. We do not. A compost that goes back in the ground, it makes the plants grow. One leaf a day off of something like a tree collar could, I feel, could change your life. One leaf a day. I truly feel that because you're getting all those enzymes, real vitamins, real nutrients, it changes you. That's what I'm trying to get some people to do is just grow something, anything, in a flower pot. I don't care. And it really will make a difference. Even mint tea. The way I do it, I mean, I don't just seep the leaves. I blend the leaves up and then I pour water through it. So I'm getting the particles from the mint itself and that's going into us. And so it's like a green drink and it tastes so good. A little bit and don't use too much. Some people have made it too strong. You don't need a lot. You blend it up and you put it in a pot. You fill it with water after you strain it. And you know the particles are going through. I'll have to show the video on that and how it's done. And that's like a green drink. And it's so refreshing on ice and it tastes so good. Again, a little goes a long way. So now, <laughs> I am sorry, I talked your ear off and I'm looking around and I know you can't see it, but the dragonflies are everywhere. They're above my head. They're flying around me. It's so beautiful. So with that, now I'm going to go. I'm listening to that leaf blower. The sun is up. It's getting warm. I'm going to go get some stuff done. Have a wonderful day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye, everybody.